good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John Gray, and this is Just Plain Living, and Julia's back. That's why everybody's going to be smiling. Uh, everybody's going to be smiling today. We're always smiling when Julia comes back. Hi, I'm Peggy Burton. And I'm Jim Fuller. And so we, that's, well, it. That's, that's it. That's it. We'll see you all next week. Folks, that's, all, uh, that's all we got today. That's all we got. <laughs> see you all next week. Yeah, right. Now we've got Chief Blackwell here, and we've got... We've got uh, this poppy, poppy, poppy sale, sale mm -hmm. day. coming mm -hmm. up, and uh, oh, there's all kinds of things. Alabama Dick, Blues it. Brothers Listen, and South Jackson. South Jackson Civic Center. If you haven't got your tickets for Alabama Blues Boys, you're going to be sorry. <laughs> We've got great. a little clip about that we're going to show here later on. Just all kinds of things, yes, always. Absolutely. The National Watercolor Society shows at the oh, Arts Center. Oh, that is wonderful. I went Sunday afternoon. It was absolutely beautiful. I am so impressed with Tullahoma Fine Arts Center. Yeah, it's, it, it, that was a wonderful it looks exhibit. good up there. And if you, even if you're not an be. artsy person, this is 40 of the top paintings in the United States yeah. of America. Yeah, we're, we're quite fortunate to get that exhibit. Oh, Evan Jess. Yeah. Evan Jess. And so just go up there and look. It won't take you 15 minutes to walk through there and look. But you'll find yourself wanting to sit and contemplate and, and soak it in. It's just beautiful. Yeah, there's, there's one it up there. It amazes me what people can do with watercolors. You know, they're, they're so easy for it to, it to drip. And then there's paintings where it just they look like looks photographs. like they're photographs. Yeah. It's amazing. It's, it's incredible what some people can do. I mean, it just really is. Uh, it, it's, it just is way above me. Plus, we have local artists that are also phenomenal. Yes, yeah. We sure do. It's way above John. Yeah. Way above. You know, I can believe that, but John is actually more into that than you would imagine just knowing John. Exactly. Yeah, he's, Speaking of local artists, kinda, Becky yeah. Shelton, the dislocated artist, will be at South Jackson prior to the Blues Brothers Saturday night. She has done a... Becky, Becky is really an, an incredible young lady. She does a lot of her artwork is done by recycling different materials. And I, I like it that. It might be metals, it might be plastics, uh, a lot of newsprint and a lot of paper. And she has done a blues uh, show in art of the different old blues players, Muddy Waters and, and Robert that, yeah. Johnson and all of these guys. And it's all done with pieces of paper that she's used and she sticks on there. Yeah, she's, and, and she's, she's a unique yeah, she's, artist. She's very, very unique. unique and very talented. And I remember at the, at the 41A, the first 41A, she was making paper hats. Oh, and yeah, they, they, they were there, and and everybody hat, down huh? there had a newspaper hat on that they'd yeah. gotten from Becky for yeah. a buck or two. Yeah. And she, it's just something she decided to do and make yeah. some hats where people could have hats. Yeah. Yeah. Wearing their hats. Yeah, that's yeah. quite, quite so. uh, unique, I have to say. By the way, Tullahoma uh, High School uh, baseball team, if you're watching this on Tuesday, is playing tonight. Uh, Columbia, they were going to play them to, uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. They need to win one of them to be district champions this year. And Tullahoma is still undefeated? In the, in the district, they're undefeated. And, they're 25, I think, 25 and four overall. And over Columbia the season. has and, lost uh, one game in the district, and that's to tell the home. Exactly. So uh, it just so takes. A, so they've got a two big, chances to beat uh, to beat them uh, once. So, although Columbia has got a really good team and got an outstanding pitcher, I think his last name is Stone, and uh, he's uh, committed to Vanderbilt along with. Uh, uh, Jordan Sheffield and right. Justice Sheffield, uh, Jordan's younger brother, is also committed to Vanderbilt. So it ought to be a nice uh, well, series. Well, Vanderbilt's yeah. be in good shape. Well, yeah. you know, and it, it amazes me in our in our district, we fight and we play, and football, basketball, track, baseball doesn't make any difference. It ends up at Columbia and Tullahoma. Yeah. yeah always that's always, yeah. always, that's, that's where we have to go. Or they have to come here to to win the district, and it's Columbia button heads with Tullahoma. So that mm -hmm. is a huge rivalry. Yes. Should be a big game. Big, big game. Tullahoma High School put on a great play. I went to see Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. I'd like to just compliment the music and the art department and the drama department for their work. It was really, it was fun. Well, I want to I want to say thanks to Chief Blackwell. He's sitting here in the audience today, and and he'll he'll be on about something else. Uh, in a minute, but he gave a report last night at the Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting about the the statistics that the, that Tullahoma has as far as crimes and mm -hmm. 
traffic stops and all that stuff. That the TBI does the statistics on that. And uh, Tullahoma is really, his department is doing a really good job in traffic stops and traffic right. accidents and, tra you know, all of the numbers are going down. That's and, because, and they're, that's because they're doing their job. They're doing and, their job. And, uh, that's wonderful. And, you know, that happens with good leadership. You know, I was speaking of traffic stops, and I didn't get stopped. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you but, have. but I was driving through the school zone one day last week, and I'm very aware of school zones. Oh, yeah, me yeah. Too. But And so the, the little crossing guard was over there, and as I'm driving through the school zone, he's going, and, then, and, and I said, pardon me, you know, and I rolled yeah. down the window, and he said, this is a school zone, you're going too fast. And for a moment, I was a little taken aback because I'm usually very cognizant of that. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I, you know, Pam was with me, and I said, I, I wasn't speeding. She yeah. said, yes, you were. You were, doing, <laughs> you, you were doing 20. And the uh -huh. speed limit is 15. It was 15. <laughs> okay, guilty, I guess. <laughs> but that's good. You know, you know that, that it speaks, is good. That speaks well it is of all good. of our volunteers as well as our first responders across the state. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I we're mean, lucky. Uh, you can't. You Blessed. can't. Can't get by without your volunteers. Nope. By the way, speaking of, uh, uh, you know, some, here's, uh, we need to offer kudos, I guess, to our state representative, Judd Matheny, because uh, Tullahoma, or Coffee County, rather, was in the midst of this redistricting, judicial redistricting, which would have changed the judicial district uh, significantly for Coffee County. And uh, through his leadership, the uh, House of Representatives voted that down good. Friday of That's last week, so they won't be doing that. Good man. That's which could have had major... Good ramifications not right. only for how long you had to wait to go to trial and that sort of thing and uh, I would imagine that if that if that had happened and you know the case logs built up that probably the new jail that Coffee County's building might not have been big wouldn't enough. Be big enough. <laughs> wouldn't be big enough. So anyway. Chief Black will have to Put a pen up over in Tullahoma. <laughs> fence them in. Yeah. <laughs> we used to we used to have our own jail in Tullahoma. I guess it's still up there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I think I it's, I think it's, it's a storage now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think it's so storage. So it's not a holding no, cell anymore. No. No. Everybody goes straight to yeah. Coffee County, and they're hanging they're hanging out the windows over there. There's so many of them in there. <laughs> That's yeah. Sad, I, isn't it? Yeah. That's and that and that I'm not sad. sure. I guess the new facility is going to be a lot better. But folks, if you're out there contemplating doing a crime don't do no. it don't don't do it because you, you probably won't like it at Coffee County <laughs> Jail <laughs> no, I wouldn't think so yeah I wouldn't think you're probably so. not gonna and, like uh, it much over there you know Mickey Lane when he was on Tom Corrington's show uh, several months back he said it's it's very very difficult you know how to deal with a lot of these folks because you want to keep the the criminals in jail that are harmful to the exactly. citizens. And a lot of the people who go are, yeah, yeah, it might be it might be a DUI, and that's harmful to citizens, but it, it might be some something that's just really not life threatening that they've done that's wrong and you try every way you can to to, to deal with those people in another way other than putting them in mm -hmm. jail because there's no room yeah. for the people who need to be in there. Right. And and that makes it tough in our society. Mm -hmm. So, because there's a lot of little little things that are maybe the laws need to be some of the laws need to be updated. And, and I think we have probably a lot of old laws on the books that might could be looked at again. That might, be sad might when change some of that. More people in jail than there is on the outside to pay all these bills. That's what <laughs> yeah. worries me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's you know that's somebody's got to pay for it. And and, and this not cheap. and this and this no, statement comes with this d disclaimer: John and I and Peggy are not experts on that particular <laughs> subject. No, so, no, 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 so. not Correct. really. But but I know one thing for sure. <laughs> Is it is very 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 expensive yes. to keep someone in jail, and particularly if you're keeping someone there for life, or for 25 or 30 years. I mean, it's hugely. Yeah, expensive. Don Emery, when he was superintendent of schools in Tullahoma, used to always, uh, when when he was asking for money, and it took, takes a lot of money to run the school yeah. system in Tullahoma. He used to say, guys. I know it's taking a lot of money, but it's a lot cheaper to educate these people than it is keep them in jail. You know, so. Good point. That's true. Good That's point. true. And yeah. I see the big X over there, so that means it's time to move on. Folks, we'll be back after these few commercial messages.
Citizens Tri-County Bank has the checking, loans, savings, and traditional banking services you want. Plus free internet banking and bill pay. Bank your change, Visa gift card, and lots more state-of-the-art banking services. We focus on the service and services you want. So you can bank when, where, and how you want. At our offices, or from just about anywhere. Citizens Tri-County Bank, the only community bank you'll ever need. What is Rotary? We're a network of people like you. In fact, we're the original social network. More than one million of us live just about everywhere you can think of. And we mean everywhere. We get together to exchange ideas, grow our businesses, and make new friends. We volunteer to help our own communities or someone else's. We're right around the corner. Come join us. The name is Rotary. Rotary International. You're welcome. This facility was built literally on the international dateline to bring charter customers tomorrow's technology first. Like Charter Internet, which was just made faster again. With speeds up to 100 megs, you can download a movie in two minutes. The number one internet service provider in the nation. Click. Fogelman, good luck with the presentation tomorrow. Already nailed it. Get Charter Internet Express for only $19.99 a month. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're pleased to have joining us uh, on the set today, Chief Paul Blackwell, Police Chief of Tullahoma, with some police pointers today. Uh, Paul said earlier that uh, we talked about so much stuff in the opening, we could just go anywhere with this thing here. Hey, now, he actually may know something about this. I did put that <laughs> disclaimer in there at the end of that segment that we didn't know what we were talking about, but, but uh, Paul probably actually knows about these kind of things. Uh, that like they say about an expert, he just knows more than the other people in the room. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> that, uh, that, that qualifies you to be an expert. Right? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, and, and yes, in your introduction, we could, we can go a lot of different <laughs> avenues today, but uh, really, I started with just one idea, but now I think I'll segue into two. Okay. All right. <laughs> and, and the first, uh, about our crime stats. As mm -hmm. was alluded to earlier, last night I was able to present the crime statistics to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. Mm -hmm and very pleased to announce that Tullahoma had an 11% reduction in crime. The statewide average was only 2.8. And that's, all, that's always nice to hear. It is good to hear uh, because obviously that's one of the things people look at when they want to come to a community is what's the, the crime rate like and mm -hmm. you know what are the issues. So we're very pleased to announce that, that we had a, a pretty significant reduction. And in doing a chart of the last seven or eight years, we are on a decline, which hopefully that trend will continue. Mm -hmm. But uh, but that's good news, and I wanted to uh, get the word out through through your outlet. And anyone that wants to see that report can go to the TBI website, go to their statistical link, mm -hmm. and then you can pull up the 2012 report, and it goes all the way down to like 2000 and. Mm -hmm. So you can do some comparisons, you can compare different communities, so it's pretty interesting. It's numbers, so you have to enjoy kind of looking at numbers. Exactly, yeah. But, uh, but the good thing is 11% reduction, whereas the state was 28 Wow, that is, and, and, and that's quite impressive. Yes. Quite impressive. Yeah. So we'll continue to work on that with the community support and hopefully get that number down next year. Additionally, is that something you guys are aware of throughout the year? You, how, how am I doing? You know, do you look at that? I, in the, in the, I probably look at it more than others uh -huh. because I read each and every report, and I know which reports get sent to the state and which one have an impact on mm -hmm. on uh, our crime stats. So I'm probably more aware of it than others, and mm -hmm. I do a monthly report that kind of gives me a snapshot of where we're at, and uh, so I'm probably the one that monitors that. Right. more closely. Right. Um, you know, the officers, we use some strategic methods to let the officers know how they can impact the, the crimes, the, the rate of crime. Mm -hmm. It's not about numbers. It, it's about actually enhancing our quality of life in Tullahoma. Mm -hmm. So we, we do have some strategic things we tell the officers to do that will encourage those people that are prone to criminal acts to choose to go elsewhere. As y'all said, if you don't want to get in trouble, you don't want to go to Coffee County Jail. You don't want to go there. No. Uh, you know, we want to make it to where you don't want to commit crime in Tullahoma. So 
you need to find you somewhere else to go to. You know, and that's interesting because I would think that as a, a police force, there's not a lot you can do about the people that are motivated to commit crimes. And the more you arrest, the most, I guess it makes your numbers look look worse. I mean, it's a, and, a and, that, and that has gotten a lot of communities in trouble is playing with the numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, you report what it is because that's that's the the right thing to do. Um, but you're right, you know, one of the things we had an increase on was in drugs and narcotics. Mm -hmm. And that number is driven by the arrest we make. So we could very easily make that number go down by quit making arrests. Right. But, you know, that's counterproductive. Right. Um, so, so you're right. But some of the other things is uh, recognizing who our criminal elements are and letting them know we know who they are and watching them. And every time they turn around, they see a police officer, mm -hmm. they're going to think, well, I need to go somewhere else. And that's what we're wanting them to do is decide this isn't the place right. I want to commit my, my crimes. Right. So in that way, that's a great concept. So in that way, we'll reduce the crime stats uh -huh. by getting rid of these folks and, and not have the incidents being reported. I, I would imagine that the vast number of people that are in Coffee County Jail, I think Sheriff Graves might have mentioned this one time, but there are, are drug-related issues. That's probably the biggest. Well, and, and of course, I had experience being the jail administrator, right. so I, I, I would hold true to that, that statement that the majority of them are uh, drug and alcohol-related offenses, right. and a lot of the crimes they commit are to support that mm -hmm. drug and alcohol dependency. Right. Uh, so yes, it is, and that's why it's so critical that we have things like the drug court. We have things like uh, nonprofits that are trying to help people mm -hmm. get away from those dependencies. Uh, it, it 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 has a big impact on us. Right. And when we look at some of our things in Tullahoma, a lot of our incidents, our thefts, our burglaries, those are driven by people that are stealing to get money for their dependency. To buy drugs. Right. Yeah. Uh, the old days, the stealing of things was to get money, mm -hmm. you know, but, but over the years it's evolved to where drugs and alcohol dependency has, has become the catalyst for a lot of these offenses. Unbelievable. Yeah. But that was just one topic. That wasn't my original topic. Um, the original topic for today was underage drinking, uh -huh. which is another part of that uh, uh, concern that we have for our community. We recently did a, a beer sting. Mm -hmm. a compliance check of 27 businesses that have permits to sell beer for off-premise consumption and six of those sold to somebody under 21 years of age mm -hmm. somebody we were using to go in and and test them um, so one we're concerned that there are businesses that are allowing underage people to come in and purchase alcohol but the other point is that proms coming up this weekend mm -hmm. Uh, we want to get the word out to parents and to the young people that if you're not 21, you don't need to be drinking. You're not right. allowed to drink by statute. And even though you're their parent, you cannot provide them alcohol. Mm -hmm. You know, we've all heard stories of parents ho hosting prom parties and graduation exactly. parties. And, you know, the mere fact you're their parent does not give you the the statutory authority or ability to provide alcohol to a minor. Plus there's personal liability issues involved. There, there's a whole there, lot so of it uh, yeah. that uh, uh, is involved. You're right. So what we're telling folks is uh, underage drinking is, is against the law. Unless you're 21, you're not to possess alcohol. Now the only exception is if you work in a store and you're, you're a clerk, you can sell alcohol or beer at 18. Mm -hmm. But obviously you can't consume it. Right. So we just want to get the word out. Uh, we partner with the Coffee County Anti-Drug Coalition, and they're going to do some things this week to uh, advertise the, the underage drinking and, and to caution parents and students that, you know, be a, part, be a, be a parent. Don't be a peer. Exactly. Don't try to get your, your child's friendship. Be a parent. Step up and prohibit the alcohol. And, uh, and we hope we'll have a safe prom. No injuries. And... Uh, you know, the, the young people can continue on with their goals and, and college and, and enjoy that. Because your life could change in an instant, folks, if you, if you don't pay attention. It can, to that and, and in law enforcement, we see that so often. Exactly. That it's oftentimes hard to relate that to a parent or to someone else that, 
we we see that we see it often, mm -hmm. and and one bad decision can be uh, detrimental and effective for the rest of your life. Okay, all right, Chief. Thank you so much for coming by today. It's it's always interesting. We may have to allocate the chief more time because because he gets really creative once he gets here. <laughs> once he gets here. So well, all I have to do is come in a little early and listen to y'all. Like <laughs> oh, okay. slow down in school zones and uh, right. But uh, yeah, any time that we expand, and if the public has a topic they want to talk about, get in touch with y'all yeah. and be glad to cover it. Right. Absolutely. And I, w I, I will slow down in school zones. <laughs> I, you know, if I hadn't had somebody in the car that verified I was going, I would have never believed him, but apparently <laughs> I was. Okay. All right. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back in just a moment. Let the smokehouse be your mountain getaway destination in beautiful Monteagle, Tennessee. Enjoy our cabins, restaurant, and old general store. Shop the smokehouse.com featuring homemade barbecue sauces, jellies, and many other fine Tennessee products. Our live Music on the Mountain series features some of the best local and Nashville talent every Friday and Saturday night, 6.30 p.m. No cover, kids welcome. The highest standard of trust offers a sense of safety and comfort. It's established over time. You know when you see it. You know when you feel it. There's a standard of trust in healthcare. It's the Joint Commission Gold Seal of Approval. In 2003, Life Care Center of Tullahoma voluntarily achieved this accreditation and maintains it still today. Life Care, meeting a higher standard because residents matter most. favorite shows shouldn't have to fight to be seen. With Charter, you get four DVRs, so now every family member can watch what they want, when they want, where they want, without any battles. Call now to get DVR service for your home. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back with uh, Executive Director Ed Carter of the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, and there's a couple of hot topics we want to talk about. I know there's in other states there is farming of animals, wild animals, and specifically deer. And I know that's places where people can go hunt and they can pay so much money and go find that big buck that, that and if that's really hunting, I really don't know, but they come back with a trophy. What, what, what is the state of Tennessee or what do you think about deer farming? in the state of Tennessee and what some of the big problems could be if that's allowed to happen. There's a couple of issues with it. One is, is what you just talked about. There's, depending on which side you end up on there, and a, that's personal opinion as to whether or not an enclosure of some type, and some of them can be several thousand acres, so whether or not it constitutes hunting in the normal sense. There are people who are using those kind of operations though, to genetically get the best deer they can for the biggest antler they can for the most part. That's a whole other issue. But what we're looking at in Tennessee is the disease associated with it. The, there's a disease called chronic wasting disease which uh, kills deer. And then there's no cure and you don't detect it until the deer is dead. You can't, there's no live test to determine whether or not it's there. And, and once it's, once the the disease, for lack of a better word, gets into the ground, which it literally can get into the, to the, the area where these people, these deer are, it, 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 there's no scientific basis on how long it can stay there. There are places where that disease has been found that they fenced it off and don't allow any kind of wildlife in there, any kind of deer, because you can contract it through the ground. So it, it's It'll spread like wildfire. It nearly has decimated the deer herds in a couple of the, of the, the Great Lake states up there that cost them millions of dollars to try to, to control. So uh, most of the states have locked down their borders. Texas was one of the, the largest deer farming states around, and the, 
everybody's beginning to close off their borders so that deer can't come in and out because they want to transmit that disease from one to another. So that's the biggest issue that we're worried about. We don't we, we're, we're doing our best to keep deer farming from occurring in Tennessee. For the disease issue and then the other, in Europe, the king's deer, you know, yeah. everything belonged to the king. And the common person had no way to hunt deer unless the king allowed them to do so. Well, in the United States, we adopted what's called the North American Model of Wildlife Management. It's what Canada and the United States uses as its very basis, and, and there are several different parts to it, but the overriding principle is that wildlife belongs to everybody. Nobody owns wildlife, and it's held in trust by the state. And so the state manages that, and that's why the agency sets laws. It's for everybody. We don't own it either. It's owned by the entire state of Tennessee, everybody that's here. So when you start taking wildlife out of the wild and putting them in an enclosure, no matter how big it is, that specifically belongs to you, it's in opposition to that North American right, model. Right. And in most states, it, it is illegal. So, yeah, yeah. so that that's the two issues: the disease and the, it goes against the public ownership. Okay. Now, what about the hogs? Well, for years, there's hogs in Tennessee. People hunted them, and it goes way back into the 1800s and the old Russian wild boar you know, with the, the big tusks that come out and mm-hmm. and all. It, it was a prized game animal. Well. Th- they're, they reproduce so quickly, they, they become sexually mature at six months, and they can have two litters a year. So they can just exponentially... Hogs expand. everywhere. And that's what's happened in a lot of states. And back to Texas again, they've declared an epidemic. Just this week, the state of New Mexico appropriated a million dollars to try to go toward hog control and hog eradication. But the hotbed of hogs is in the southeast. Uh, Europe's got a whole huge problem with them. But anyway, the agency undertook a program in response to a lot of the agricultural community are saying, we can't even farm anymore. Hogs are killing us. So we started into a hog control and eradication where we could. And that's, that's caused a controversy because those people who like to hunt them, that's I totally understand. We, we've removed hunting as a way to control them because while it's not everybody for sure, there are a number of people who spread hogs so that there'd be more hogs to hunt in all parts of the state. For about 10 years, we had no limit on hogs. You get rid of them and the hog problem got worse. So now we're to the point where we're saying we're going to trap, we're going to try to to take as many as we can out and we'll control them, but we're going to try to keep hunting as out of it as being an incentive. A private landowner can do just about anything they want to. They can they can shoot them, they can hunt them, they can trap them. Uh, but on the public lands, we're, we're removing hunting as a way of taking that to try to remove the incentive. So in some places, that's, that's caused us some problems. Uh, one of our management areas was vandalized to the point that we had to shut it down and then reinstitute programs there. But, but anyway, we're people, going to pe- With people that were upset because they couldn't go on those lands and hunt hogs. Yes. Even though now there are more days to actually hunt hogs on that particular management area than there was before in terms of specific hog hunting days. But anyway, that's that's caused some controversy. But landowners and the agency personnel through trapping efforts over last year, not which wasn't a complete year, there were some 4,000 hogs that were taken out and killed. And it, I don't know how big of a dent that made, but we've got a long way to go. A long way to go on the hogs. Everybody out there go hog hunt. Well, we don't hunt them now. <laughs> oh, well, well, go hog trap. There you go. <laughs> Find somebody with some land that's got hogs on it and go hog hunting. They can do that, can't they? As long as they sign up with that landowner, they, they, the landowner can bring 10 people in to help them. Right. Okay. All right. Well, with we have a little time left. And with this being, I think, the first or second day of spring, that means it's not long till boating season. Exactly. Do you have a little bit to say to our audience out here about boating safety and and what to be looking for from your guys and and how they need to act responsibly on the on the water? Absolutely. Going into the springtime, it's the time to check. I'll go for the safety part first. It's the time to check your rigs. Make sure your fuel lines are still intact. They haven't rotted over the winter. 
you know, all, all your fittings are up, the just general maintenance on the boat. And then that first outing, the water's still going to be probably pretty cool. Just remember that a life jacket is going to save your life. And there's inflatables now that you can wear around your waist and you can wear over your shoulder. You don't even know you have them on and they have more flotation than, than the regular life jackets that we all grew up with. Right. And almost every boat accident is because somebody drowned rather than being hit or an impact or something. So. Wearing a life jacket, checking your gear, that's where to go uh, in the very part, early part of the season. All right, and don't party too hard. <laughs> well, there are boating under the influence laws just like there are driving under the influence. And that, a lot of studies have shown that alcohol in the water affects you three times faster than it does on land because of the vibration, the, the motion, the, the intense part you get from the sunlight. So it, it sneaks up on you pretty quickly and it's a pretty unforgiving environment. So pretty much the same rules apply. The operator can't be under the influence, and, and the, we, we, that's one thing we look for. We look for reckless operation. We look for people that, that are obviously intoxicated because we don't want them to impact somebody else's somebody day. Somebody else, right, right. And what, what I'd like to, to say to you folks out here is, you know, Ed's got these guys that are out here in, in our state trying to make sure we're safe. We have we have animals that we can hunt and and we can fish and enjoy them these guys when you see them they're your friend they're out sure there are. to help you have a safe time in your recreation in the state of Tennessee and they're they're all of them good guys anybody that spends their whole life outside in the wildlife and on the water has got to got to be a happy individual so y'all help them stay that way don't give them any problem and we appreciate that greatly okay and thank you for your time and thank you Ed Carter the executive director of the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency right here at Channel 6 and uh, folks we appreciate him spending his time with us here, and we'll be back shortly. On the train test range, the search for any possible weakness continues. It's hard to stop a train. Really hard. Train, the most reliable for a reason. Hello, my name is Joe Stroop with Stroop's Accurate Refrigeration. I'm here to talk to you about a couple incentives that are going on between now and end of the year. First is your federal tax credit up to $300. Secondly, 0% financing up to 15 months on XL products. Third, spring promotion up to $1,100. Finally, $500 incentives from your local power distributor. Please give us a call at 455-8757. Thank you. So you've been meaning to do something healthy, commune with nature, get outdoors, and meet new people. We have the perfect solution. Come hike with us. You can find a Tennessee Trails Association chapter near you, including Clarksville, Columbia Franklin, Cove Lake, Highland Rim, Jackson, Knoxville, Oak Ridge, Martin Weekly, Memphis, Murfreesboro, Nashville, Plateau at Crossville, Rugby in the Big South Fork, and Upper Cumberland. We're on the web at tennesseetrails.org. It's fun, it's stress-free, and it's good for you. See you on the trails. If you like HDTV, you're going to like what Charter's been up to. Adding so much free HD that Charter TV is a whole new experience. National Geographic HD, Animal Planet HD, Discovery HD, Sports in HD, Movies, News, Kids Programming. Plus, Charter now has thousands of free movies and shows in HD on demand anytime. You want to see more TV in HD? Try Charter. It's smarter. Welcome back to Living. You're going to be glad you stayed around because I'm talking to people from the American Legion Auxiliary. Miss mm -hmm. Diane Robinson, your vice president. Of uh, second vice. Second vice president. And Will McCain is a volunteer and the treasurer, <laughs> treasurer working with the organization, which I, for one, think is a wonderful organization. It's time for poppy sales. So let's talk about that a little bit. Well, it's the annual poppy drive, and we're 
going to be uh, at the banks on Friday the 26th. Would that be all the banks in uh, Tullahoma? Uh, most of them and mm -hmm. the credit union. Okay. And Saturday we're going to be at Walmart and Kmart. And then on Memorial Weekend, Saturday, I think it's the 25th of May, we'll be at Kroger. They're going to have a veterans uh, special. Oh, that'll day. be nice. Yes. It, and all the day we'll have something to do with right, uh, right. honoring the veterans, mm -hmm. which we mm -hmm. all need to do. I know this started with the First World War, Wilma. Mm -hmm. And I know you have a proclamation mm -hmm. from the, the mayor. mayor. And I think it would be nice for people to be reminded of what this is about. You okay. want to read some of it? Okay. I'll read just part of it. It says, whereas the poppies are the memorial flower for those who died in service to America. It is a tradition which began in the years following First World War and whereas veterans returning to their home in this country remember the, the wild poppy which lined the de devastating battlefields of France and Flanders and the soldiers of all nations came to look upon this flower as a living symbol of their comrades' unity sacrificed and Whereas the Department of Georgia of American Legions adopted the poppy as a memorial flower at its convention in 1920 and took the idea to the American Legion National Convention at Cleveland in September 1920 and the poppy was ad adapted as a national memorial flower. Now therefore, Eileen Curley, Curley uh, Mayor of the City of Tullahoma, by the author authorization invested to me to, to declare Saturday of April the 27th, 2013, is Poppy Day in the Tallahoma and urge all citizens to recognize this thing. I think that's a wonderful thing to do, and I appreciate a lot of the things that Mayor Curley does, but of all things, I, I appreciate the poppy sales. And tell us a little bit about where the money goes. It goes to the veterans. Uh, most of our work is done at the Veterans Hospital in Murfreesboro. We okay. do uh, six pizza parties a year for a war, our war that we have adopted That's wonderful. there in uh, Murfreesboro. And at Christmas, we spend quite a bit of money. We and do a take big- gifts. Uh, we take, we can't take the gifts, but we do a big birth, uh, Christmas, Christmas party, party. That we have the cakes and the chips and dips and cheesies and bologna, which they don't- And do they gather they have, together in we, the lobby or? We have a wing a and wing. they get together there in the wing and we sing songs and we spend about three hours with them the day of our Christmas party. I think that's wonderful. What and, a gracious gift. And they enjoy it tremendously. Do you know how many people are in the, the Veterans Hospital in Murfreesboro? The, Any idea? The last time that we talked about it, there was like 250. 250, mm -hmm. and that would be probably World War II, Korean War, Vietnam, no. mm -hmm. and on down. I on suppose. down, it is. And they're building a new Fisher home they're on campus next to the Veterans Hospital, and that is where the family can the stay. The families can stay. Uh, can stay when they've got veterans uh, in I the really hospital. I appreciate that. And there's no char there will be no charge to the family. That they can leave a donation when they leave. Yeah. And we've also adopted a veteran. She's a lady, uh, and we send money to take care of her where she can go to the movies and go out to eat with the That's group. That's wonderful. Uh, once to once a month, yeah. And then we do we give her uh, Christmas gifts, a big whatever she needs at Christmas. We get together and we do that for her, and she she's very. They're all very very appreciative. I know they it. are. And if somebody just wants to donate at different times during the year, mm -hmm. do you all have a phone number or a certain place that they can come to they donate? Can, they can call me at okay. uh, four five five zero five two one. Or if you want to make a donation by check, just mail it to me, Wilma Kane, at 1646 Ryla Creek Road, Normandy, Tennessee, uh, 37360. And we will be glad to take your donation and put it towards our veterans. And they make the check out to? American Legion Auxiliary. Ame American Legion Auxiliary. Mm -hmm. Do you all meet, have meetings, mm -hmm. and invite volunteers in at all times? Oh, sure, we'd love and more when volunteers. It, when are your meetings? This, the fourth Thursday of every month at our post 43 on 
Adla Atlantic. Yeah, North Atlantic, Atlantic Street. North Atlantic, mm -hmm. post 43 on mm -hmm. North Atlantic mm -hmm. Street. Now, what time is that meeting? Six o'clock. Six o'clock on mm -hmm. the fourth Thursday. Fourth Thursday of every month. Mm -hmm. That should be easy to remember. Yeah. Do you have many volunteers? Most of our members, members. we're yes. members of the auxiliary. Mm -hmm. uh, we have volunteers that help us with the poppy drive. Uh, and so everybody do. gets a poppy. These are poppies yes, in your hand. Yes, these are our poppies. Mm -hmm. and, and they give a donation, we will give them a poppy. That they can show in their car or wherever. Yeah. They have I generally hang mine over in, on my rearview mirror. Yeah. So that's for, and my, and my two sons has got the same tradition. They'll hang theirs on their the rear view way. mirror. Yes. I, what got you uh, interested in this? Oh, my my dad was in the uh, World War II. World War II. And my mother was uh, president of the auxiliary in, in Michigan, where I'm from. And she did the poppy thing, and of course I was recruited. <laughs> well, we appreciate your service. Yeah. I, I so think just that we often forget how many, besides the soldiers, mm -hmm. are giving time and energy mm -hmm. to the cause. I always think of the wives and the mothers and the sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that are involved, and I, I am so grateful for this process. Do you all have a certain amount of money you hope to get each year? No. no. We just, just take, take yeah. what you get. What we get, and, and then we have, then we do a budget, and then we have know how much money we can spend each year. So your budget for the, comes from what you collect through From the all of our donations. From mm -hmm. the poppy sales. And is this yeah. the only time during the year that the poppies mm -hmm. are, this is the only are out fun. there? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think yeah. it's spring because the flowers grew in spring? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we always have ours in, in spring. And I know Flanders feel I can visualize mm -hmm. the crosses and what it means to me and to our country. Well, any last words? Poppies will be for sale starting Friday, Friday, Friday Saturday. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. Walmart, uh, Kmart, Kmart on Saturday. and all the banks. Mm -hmm. All the banks on Friday. On Friday. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we urge you to yeah. give freely to this wonderful cause. Yeah. And I really appreciate yeah. what you've done. Thanks. Diane. Thank you. Wilma, it's good to see you good again. Good to see you. I know our boys fought their way through. High school, didn't they? Yeah, they did. <laughs> they, they did. They were that big football yeah. thing. They had yes. fun. They had a ball. And uh, we we still admire them for what yeah. they're giving to our country. Yes, we All do. All right, I guess we'll be back with something else that has to do with life here in Middle Tennessee. Thank you. Mark, you've won just about everything there is to win in racing. What's next? I'd like more people to know about ER Extra. The emergency room at Harton Regional Medical Center? I just want them to get the best care they can get. That just gets me right here, Mark. <laughs> Maybe you'd like to pay them a visit. <laughs> ER Extra at Harton Regional Medical Center. ER Extra. Extra fast, extra easy, extra great. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. When you see the sign, The Main Event, take a close look inside at a hair studio that offers services by some of the best master stylists in Middle Tennessee. These stylists offer a list of services that compete with large city salons, from trendy cuts for men, women, and children, to the latest color techniques, including highlights and bold color accents. Other services offered include permanent hair weaving and relaxing to formal hairstyle for that special occasion. You can also give yourself a very special treat with a full makeover including full body waxing. For your convenience, we are open Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. until the last client leaves happy. Call and make your appointment at 931-571-8682 or stop by our Telehoma location at 207 North Jackson Street. Pay for yourself at the main event today.
How long has it been since you raced a cheetah? Are your tornado creating skills getting rusty? Tired of being the only one in your neighborhood who hasn't built a dinosaur? Sounds like it's time to visit the Hands-On Science Center. The Hands-On Science Center is an indoor science playground. In this museum, please touch is the rule. Join us for weekly science demonstrations on space, lasers, lizards, rocks, and a whole lot more. No two visits are ever the same, so visit often to see our ever-changing exhibits and demonstrations. The Hands-On Science Center, 101 Mitchell Boulevard in Tullahoma. Are you ready? Yep. Click the links. Oh, sweet Lisa, you're so fine, like a very fine wine. Girl, I need you in my life. Will you be my wife? Charter Internet has more bandwidth to support all your devices. Experience the power of Charter on the nation's fastest Internet. folks we're back i just saw my buddy jay gregory come walking through the door over there i bet he's coming over here to talk about scott pallet gonna be at the banquet hall this weekend he is we'll sneak him on here in a minute right now this weekend is prom weekend in telahoma and sro officer uh joe brown had a mock wreck at the high school last week uh, sort of a reality check all the juniors and seniors came out and watched what happens when you make the wrong decisions. What we'll do right now is show you that video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm with Resource Officer Joe Brown at Tullahoma High School, and we are having a staged automobile accident. And Joe, tell us why this is being taking place. Well, John, uh, we like to try to do stuff uh, this time of year. It's prom season here in April. Uh, it's not just for prom, but this is when we have a lot of things happen uh, it's all over the place. Kids get out and, you know, uh, get, to get getting a little crazy. And I just like to do stuff to kind of get their minds back on track of uh, what can happen. Uh, you know, it can happen anytime, but, uh, you know, if you've got teenagers out and they're partaking in illegal drugs or alcohol or something and they're out driving around on the roads, uh, you know, bad things can happen. And we're just going to kind of do a little role playing here and a little taste of reality for our juniors and seniors. They're going to come out and view it. And we've got a simulated crash with actors that's going to play the, play the roles of the passengers in the vehicles. And uh, hopefully we can send a message and, you know, uh, make people think before they do something stupid. There has been a dispatch let out. Here come the police and the ambulance into this wreck site. This is exactly what it would look like at a wreck site. And these people coming up to find out what's happening here. You see about the shape of the people. Responders are checking on the, what's going on here. Firemen are looking at this and trying to get the doors open, get the people out of these vehicles. And this is one person here that is seen to have been killed in this accident. Know what can happen when you don't make the right decisions about drinking and driving or doing drugs and driving on a night that should be an important night for you end up in disaster. And the one door can't get open, so they have they're hooking up the jaws of life.
gentleman, I'm with Winston Brooks, who is the information officer at this accident. Uh, Winston, tell us about this tragedy. Yep. Last night about 1 a.m., there was a call that came in, a crash, two vehicles involved, five persons. What we know at this uh, point right now is this, uh, one critically injured, and uh, life lighting is coming in, Vanderbilt life light. Uh, there's been one fatality. The uh, identities are not going to be released because we presume at this point that they're minors, and uh, we also want to notify their family as well. The Tullahoma Fire Department, Coffee County Emergency Medical Services, Tullahoma Police Department, and Vanderbilt Life Flight have responded. And uh, as more information is made available, uh, we'll get back to you. And we do have uh, another briefing scheduled in about 30 minutes from now. Thank you, Winston Brooks. For a unique gift for someone special, or perhaps something just for yourself, then you need to check out Grady Mac Denim Company right here in the heart of Tullahoma. Grady Mac features the full line of men's and women's Lucky brand apparel. Stop in and check out our denim production line. Grady Mac offers a full line of outdoor sporting apparel and much more. And check out our custom fly fishing equipment, fine art, and fine sports memorabilia. There's something for everyone at Grady Mac Denim Company, the most unique store in Tullahoma. a Tennessee vacation? It starts off like any road trip. And then, boom, adventure and thrills everywhere you look, which happens to be some of the most beautiful scenery in the country. Music here, history there, and all kinds of green in between. Come relax and unwind, or bring the crowd for some stargazing, or stargazing. Whatever you do, come hungry and expect an awesome soundtrack. It's all right here in Tennessee. We're playing your song. For a free vacation guide, visit tnvacation.com. The Charter Triple Play lets you experience TV, internet, and phone the way you want with no contracts. Hooked on HD? Now over 100 HD channels available. Movie lover? 
Get 10,000 on-demand movies and shows, 1,500 in HD, including movies in 3D. Missing your favorite shows? Record and watch TV with DVR service for four rooms and over 780 hours of storage space. Get Charter TV for $29.99 a month. Photo Fiend, Music Fan, Video Streamer? Switch to super fast Charter Internet and do it all with the bandwidth to support all your devices. At 30 megabits per second, Charter Internet is 10 times faster than the phone company's DSL. Get Charter Internet for $29.99 a month. Want more talk for less? Charter Phone has unlimited long distance calling with no added fees like the phone company charges. Get Charter Phone for $29.99 a month. The new Charter Triple Play. TV, internet, and phone for just $29.99 a month each when bundled. Call 855-81-T-PLAY now. All right, folks, we're back, and I am visited with my friends from Bell Buckle, Tennessee, Valerie Smith and Jay Gregory, and they're here to talk about a weekend, and, and not just a weekend, but a couple of weeks' worth of great events. A lot of weeks' worth, huh? Yeah, at the Bell <laughs> Buckle Banquet Hall. Tell us, tell it, tell it, tell it, Scott Pallet, Scooter. Well, um, yeah, Scott Pallet's coming back into Bell Buckle with his band called Just Us. Mm -hmm. It's going to be at the Bell Buckle Banquet Hall. And I think that I brought something here to show on the screen that um, shows a flyer of that. Oh, well, it's not as readable as I'd hope, but Scott Pallet and Just Us, they're having concert, dinner, and dance at the Bell Buckle Banquet Hall on April 27th, which is a Saturday. So that's coming that's up this, this Saturday. Coming Saturday yes, this mm -hmm. Saturday. If you don't have anything to do, come on to Bell Buckle. The doors open at 5, having dinner at 6 o'clock, and the music starts at 7. And they will need to call for reservations. And the ticket on that is what? $25. $25. $25. And we have a lot of reservations already, so there's still some space. But uh, make sure you call us. A lot of you people will remember Scott from this area before, and he does a great job. This band is fabulous out of Macon, Georgia. Yeah, he's down in Macon now and does a lot of music, does a lot of live music down right. there. Right, and there will be a lot of, it'll be like old home week. I know a lot of Scott's friends will be there that night. It'll be like, it's more like going to be like a reunion, really? I think, that's, than that's, that's, anything that's else. Really, that's for sure. Yeah. And then we're going to have a really fun time, the salutes to the veterans, mm -hmm. yeah. um, dinner and dance, once again with that. 20 some odd piece orchestra coming into Bill Buckle, Tennessee at the banquet hall. We had a great time last time. Everybody danced and enjoyed dinner and music. And, uh, and that's the South Jackson Street band with yes. Peggy Burton. With Peggy yeah, Burton. I, I got to tell you, that's the first time we had them over there. They were absolutely beyond my expectations. They were fabulous. And uh, what a professional band. And I want to encourage you again. We had a lot of young people come with the older folks, and they had a ball. They danced, and they enjoyed it, and I had some of the younger kids. My, my grandkids said they had never seen a band like that before. No. And, and, you know, for you younger people to come out and dance and have a good time, the music is awesome, and the band is tremendous, and it's something totally different than what you've ever probably uh, experienced. You know, and, and there was a while around here that there were dance clubs you could go to. There's not any, there's hardly anywhere to go dance anymore, and so when you have an opportunity to do something like this, it's a, it's a really fun thing. Oh, it's, it's, it's and marvelous. And that's danceable music too. Yeah. That music is so smooth that you just, you can't help but dance, whether you dance or not. Right, and we, had, we group, just had a lot of people. Group, and that's going to be May fourth, so that's going to be the Saturday after the. Just Us concert. Uh -huh. So if you want to listen to some rock music, go to Scott Pallet's Soft Rock, Scott Pallet Show. Um, uh, and then, the ne then just get your dancing shoes back on mm -hmm. and dance to a different rhythm to the a Salute to the Veterans Dinner and Dance. Um, the South Jackson Street Band with Peggy Burton starts at 6 o'clock. Be ready for dinner and um, dancing and, and just visiting with folks and uh, then after that we have a f special Mother's Day buffet. Where are you going to serve at your Mother's Day buffet? Oh, we've got a, we've got all kinds of stuff, Valerie. Uh, we're going to have prime rib and uh, lots of great salads, fresh fruit salads and fresh fruits of all kinds and vegetables and great desserts and uh, uh, and it says here, Virginia baked ham, southern fried chicken, baked salmon. Now, is that southern fried chicken, is that the Jay Gregory recipe? Mm-hmm. Chicken? It is. 
which, folks, if you have not eaten any of the chicken that this guy fixes, you, you better do it. Yeah, it is light as a cloud. It's, uh, it's a very unique recipe. There's a big history to it, and if you all come Mother's Day, I'll tell you about how I got the recipe and where it came from, and the, you know, it's, it's an interesting story. But it, yeah, it's going to be fabulous. The food will be fabulous. Uh, uh, we will need reservations on that. Last year at Mother's Day, it was pretty well sold out, so get your reservations in early uh, on all these things, because, you know, this going back to the band and Peggy Burton and them, uh, they're backed by popular demand, folks. They, those people hadn't left, and they demanded we have them back. So, and we had a full house, didn't we, Peggy? It was a full house. So make sure you get your reservations and don't miss this show. Sorry, I talked to you that time, Valerie. No, keep talking. It's good. He's the man, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Valerie's fine. <laughs> Valerie didn't bring her guitar today. How's your? Speaking of that, how's your new project going? You it's going okay? really well. I'm just working on it. Just got back from um, Raleigh, North Carolina. Met with the upcoming, um, well, the committee that's doing the upcoming International Bluegrass Music Association conference. Moving to Raleigh, North Carolina, from Nashville. And that ought to be great and uh, wonderful, exciting new things. And uh, working on my album and um, hoping to be in combination with that move and stuff. But uh, I'll probably be in Europe during the time that that big, big blowout's going on for bluegrass. But just working on my music and writing and, and singing a lot and uh, getting ready for these things here in Bell Buckle, too. Let me mention, too, that Valerie's open in Dollywood Memorial Day at the Pines Theater at Dollywood. And she was there last year at the Celebrity Theater, and she'll be there again this year, Memorial Day weekend, Saturday and Sunday, three shows a day. So That's I'd like great. to invite everybody to go out to Dollywood uh, Memorial Day weekend and uh, enjoy some music. And how's Jeanette doing? She's Did still you just take her me. on vacation? We just got back from Florida, and she's be, still being mean to me. I thought we'd get her all relaxed and nice. Didn't work? No. No, she's still telling me what to do. <laughs> they went to the Epcot Center. I'm sure next, uh, Greg will be uh, thinking how he can build something like the Epcot Center in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Yeah, well, well, of course. That's what I thought maybe he was going there for research. <laughs> <laughs> trying to find, trying to get a Have set an of international <laughs> section of Bell Buckle that you yeah. can walk around. Well, but. I talked to Goofy, and I've invited him to Bell Buckle <laughs> to join the rest of us. But he said he'd be down. But yeah, if, you, if anybody just wants to go to the web page, to see what everything is going on at the banquet hall, which mm -hmm. I mean, they always have something going on there. Um, just go to bellbucklebanquethall.com, bellbucklebanquethall.com, and they'll find out about all the events. You can also go to bellbuckle.com to find out what's going in Bellbuckle because there's right. a lot that happens there too. Then, if you sign up, I bet if you sign up somewhere, you can get emailed the chat and chew. Oh, yeah, the chat and chew also goes out sometimes twice a week on the different things that are going on at the banquet hall. And all they have to do is either email the office at bellbucklecafes.net. Just email the office and say, I want to join your newsletter. We'll put their name on there and get, make get, sure they get the newsletter. You get the chat and chew. The chat and chew, Bell Buckle and, chat and, and chew. when you go to Bell Buckle, there's a lot of chatting takes place, and there's always food to be had, so there's a lot of chewing going on. That's right. Jay Gregory, Valerie Smith, thank you very much. Thank and, you, And uh, Scott Pallett, this Saturday night, the 4th, Peggy Burton's Band and the Veterans Tribute, and May 12th, Mother's Day Buffet, all at the Bell Buckle Banquet Hall. Get a reservation and be there. We'll be right back. I thought Red Cross does Katrina. They don't help single moms. Hi. What happened to our house last year it about your birthday? It flooded and the water flooded out. Yeah. The Red Cross mm -hmm. arranged the hotel for us. They gave me that break, that leverage, to be able to get it together and uh, take care of them, you know? I feel like we've come full circle. Mm -hmm. This is how I'll do it. There you go. 
Partners for Healing provides medical care to the working uninsured of Coffee, Franklin, and Moore counties. We are in Tullahoma from 8 to 5, Monday through Thursdays, and in Manchester on Fridays from 8 to 12. We provide primary medical care and offer an in-house disease management program. My name is Rosie Mitchell, and I would just like to say I am blessed to have partners in my life. Please call 455-5014 for more information. Thank you for being one of our Partners for Healing. A salute to the Never Wasters, the Coupon Clippers, Switch Flippers, One Last Drop of Milk Drippers, the Thoughtfully Thrifty, and the Just Plain Cheap. Charter respects your economic IQ and honors it with a phone service worthy of your ever-watchful wallet. Charter Phone, just $19.99 a month for real monthly savings for fabulously frugal folks like you. Switch to Charter Phone and get unlimited local and long distance and 13 calling features with no extra fees like the phone company charges you. Welcome back. I want to talk to you just a little bit about the Alabama Blues Boys Tribute Band that's coming to South Jackson Civic Center this Saturday night at 7.30, preceded by an art exhibit by Becky Shelton. Uh, the show starts at 7.30, so be sure and get your ticket, 455-5321, if you'd like a reservation, or go online, www.southjackson.org. And at this moment, we have a few clips from the Alabama Blues Brothers Tribute Band.
drink tonight, let me hear you say, yeah. yeah. Is everybody got something to drink tonight? Smoking tobacco accounts for three of every ten fire deaths in the United States. Tullahoma Fire Department, Tullahoma Fire Department, need you en route to a structure fire, 202 Main Street, heavy smoke showing, neighbors advise child trapped inside. Lighters, matches, and associated smoking paraphernalia are the leading cause of preschooler fire deaths. We as firefighters know that most structure fires can be prevented. I've got one! I've got one! Command, this is primary search. We have a victim. Need EMS to meet us at the front door. Please help us to give you a fighting chance. This can be prevented. Contact the Tullahoma Fire Department for a free home safety inspection. same. Now you can make a date with your favorite movies and shows anywhere and anytime with on-the-go content from Charter. All right, we're back here. Welcome back to Living. I'm Marilyn Ewing. It's always a pleasure to be right here because when I'm here, it's a lot of excitement going on in the area. And of course, you've heard, you've seen, you've uh, you've experienced in the last few years the big dogwood festival going on there in Franklin County, Winchester, Tennessee. Well, we're very privileged to have two very special guests with us today. It is Steve Macon uh, to my extreme left, and also Gene Sneed. We want to say welcome Good to morning, both of you guys. Morning. Yes, Thanks. yes. Thank you for your time. I know that it's drawing very near for the big dogwood festival that's going on in Winchester. That means you're just extremely busy, I'm assuming. Very busy. <laughs> it's starting to crank up. Absolutely. Now, this has been exist in existence for several years. How many years now? This is our ninth annual this wow. year. Wow. Congratulations. And, uh, first, first weekend in May. Absolutely. Yeah. How do you top year to year to year? Because it's always been a, a blowout. It's always been a big success. So how do you do that? How do you start playing for that? try to keep that? it fresh and just do a few things that are different. and. Um, some things you won't see the next year that you saw the previous year and there's always a new twist or something you know a couple of years ago we added the teen zone mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know it, so there's always something a little different right exactly exactly we're going to talk about the bending and all of the hundred plus vendors that's going to be a part of the show again this year but but Steve you're a big part of this entertainment thing and that's uh, that's of course uh, something that draws crowds from everywhere uh, I understand that the, the lineup is incredible uh, yes, it yes, is. Yes, let's talk uh, about it. Uh, we're, we've got a lineup that starts off on Friday afternoon yeah. at 1 o'clock. Uh, Nikki Richardson, uh, she starts our festival off, and uh, we, we go from there till all the way till 11 o'clock yeah. on Friday night. Right. Uh, we'll have, uh, on Friday, we'll have So Session, yeah. uh, Bad Monkey. Mm -hmm. And then starting on Saturday morning, we'll start out at 10 o'clock with Bluegrass, and Bluegrass will run to 2.30, and then we'll switch to country, Yeah. and then we'll go from country to ro at 6 o'clock to rock and roll. All right. And then <laughs> from rock and roll that night at 8.30, the Atlanta Rhythm Section Ooh, will be performing. Wow, big time, big time. With so many local and regional groups uh, in the area, so much talent, how do you solicit to get who you get? Uh, to put in the lineup, we, we have a committee, mm -hmm. and uh, basically, we as a committee decide what group. They send us a list of uh, okay. of uh, groups uh, that that we can choose from. Yes, and uh, a lot a lot of the local people will go on our international uh, website, yes. Dogwood Festival website, and submit. I'd like to be considered for your okay. festival, and if. Okay. If someone was interested in doing that, uh, and what we do, we take a folder. We have 15 slots to fill for wow. the weekend. Wow. And uh, yeah. Sunday is usually our local high school bands, yeah. uh, our high school yeah. band, also yeah. our middle school band. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this year we're having at 9 o'clock on Sunday a community worship service. Great. So uh, Great. 
but if there's a group was interested in performing at the Dogwood Festival, we'll mm -hmm. we'll take that and yes. run a copy off and put it in a folder in the yep. following year to consider them. All right, sounds like a winner to me. This actually primarily takes place downtown Winchester, right there on the square. Yes, ma'am. Is that right? Okay. It's actually the uh, the detour will take you around the nine blocks downtown, <laughs> and and so there's vendors. The kid zone is in the on the the grounds of the Board of Education down yeah. off of College Street yeah. and then you follow College Street to the square, it's wall to wall yes. arts and crafts mm -hmm. vendors and you get up on the square and you have a lot of the food vendors around the square. All right. The main stage sits <laughs> next to the Oldham Theater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, But then vendors go down First Avenue uh, on each side of uh, the square, uh, First Avenue Northwest, First Avenue Southwest and uh, the teen zones over there between the, the First United Methodist Church and the fire hall. And so it's it's pretty spread out. Yeah, it's absolutely. Plenty of room to, to walk around and yeah, enjoy yourself. Sure. Businesses have to be ecstatic as, as well because this draws. Mm -hmm. This draws uh, a lot of people. And uh, of course, they, they make a lot of more success uh, for what they're doing as well. A lot of them have their biggest weekend yeah. during Dogwood. Some of them go the other direction and don't. They, they just enjoy the festival uh -huh. and don't operate their business, but some right. of them do operate their business, and it's so uh, yeah. there's different takes on it, but uh, certainly the ones that uh, uh, get out there and, and remain open and we leave a space in front of their business so that right. they're accessible and, and everything, uh, they do very well. Absolutely. How do you accommodate all of the parking? That, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a mystery, uh, actually. The funny thing about it is, we were talking about this the other day, way back in 2005 at the first festival, yeah. we actually set up satellite parking mm -hmm. at the, the high school parking lot and at another parking lot, and we were going to run school buses ah. um, downtown to the satellite parking so that people wouldn't have to worry about getting close. Kind of shuttle. shuttle. And mm -hmm. no one really took advantage of that, oh. so we haven't done it since. Okay. And um, somehow, you know, 15, 20,000 people find wow. a place to park. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I love the idea. I love the shuttle, you know, idea. So yeah, maybe. We thought it was the way to go, and right. it just wasn't utilized, so yeah. we don't have to do it. Oh, they, absolutely. They find a place somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. As I mentioned, it draws people from everywhere. Uh, some of the places, uh, bar that you've seen uh, for, for visiting this festival could be where? We've seen them from really all over the place. Yeah. Um, certain people kind of follow certain bands, they certain do. headliners. They do. And so, you know, uh, last year when we had Steel Magnolia, you <laughs> know, they had people coming from certain parts of the country just to see them oh, yeah. and, and that yeah. type of thing. But in our general draw, a lot of people from Alabama, Huntsville area right. come up for it because right. it's just down the road. Yeah. Uh, we get a lot from the Murfreesboro area coming down this way. Yeah. Um, and then it's a lot of the people that just follow particular bands. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, there really is a theme with this. There's a reason for this, the dogwoods and such. Tell us about that. The, well, the dogwoods, the festival is to really honor the Franklin County nurserymen. Yes. Yes. That, uh, over the years, uh, several, several cultivars of the flowering dogwood have been patented by Franklin mm -hmm. County nurserymen. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Cherokee Red was the first pink dogwood out there. Wow. And that's a Franklin County product yep. design yep. and invention. And uh, so there's a lot of heritage and tradition with the dogwood industry in Franklin County, and that's really where the festival came from. Sure. Um, this year, however, locally, our theme is the circus theme. Mm -hmm. And I want to mention that because our vendors are having a contest. We've challenged our vendors to decorate themselves in the theme of the circus. Oh, there you go. We're going to the circus. Yeah. However they want to incorporate <laughs> yeah. the circus theme is fine. Uh, and we'll judge them mm -hmm. on Friday afternoon, and the winning, the winning vendor will have a uh, free space the following year. Ah, second place will get half off, yeah. and third place will get a third off. So yeah. uh, there's Very some good. incentive there to, yeah, uh, yes. to get with it and, and do the circus theme. Absolutely, I did check out the uh, the website and looked at all of the lineup, the times and such. Give us that information again for. Uh, individuals maybe just kind of wanting to to take a sneak peek as to what we're going to expect okay you want to mm -hmm. go through the whole <laughs> stage line uh, yeah well just kind of the uh website and, and information okay. uh phone the, numbers and things of that nature the website is winchester dogwood festival.com yes just all run together yes um and on there there's an entertainment link oh yeah 
bios on all the bands. Yeah, um, so very it's good. Times. Yep. Times. It's all mm -hmm. on there. Yeah. Uh, our Facebook page also has a ton of information on it. Okay. Uh, Winchester Dogwood Festival. Mm -hmm. And uh, so check out our Facebook page as well. Like us. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it's going to be a great time. Again, the dates for this is coming up. May 3, 4, and 5. And 5. All right. Well, good luck to you guys on this year's show. And one thing that we've done this for the last two years is uh, the kids zone is free. Okay. Anything the kids want to do in the kids zone oh, is free. Absolutely. The bungee jumping, yep. the, the anything. Um, uh, that's something that we've worked on for the last two years so mm -hmm. uh, a parent can bring their children and if they want to bungee jump or do all the different rides it doesn't cost a thing. Oh beautiful, beautiful. We look forward to it. Can't wait to see uh, all of these wonderful uh, entertainment acts the Atlanta Rhythm Section, Atlanta Rhythm Section. on the uh, Saturday night as well. So guys thank you so much for coming by and, thank you. and, and thank giving you, us uh, what's going on at the Dogwood Festival. Of course that's coming right along May 3rd, 4th and 5th Winchester, Tennessee. We've been speaking with Steve Macon along with Gene Sneed for the Dogwood Festival. I'm Marilyn Ewing, back with more in just a moment. Here at the International Dateline, charter scientists are bringing you tomorrow's technology today. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning. Like the nation's most powerful internet and TV in HD with free DVR. Record your favorite shows to watch on your schedule. Anytime in the future. Good morning, Doctor. Get a free DVR when you bundle and let it all in. All right, we're back and we're quick and we don't have a whole we lot of time. We just barely got back in these things. Motlow College had their spring show this past week and uh, Jake Gray did a, did a tribute to Sinatra at the end of that show. And uh, we're going to close our show today with, with David Bethay and the Motlow band out there and uh, Jacob Gray singing Zoot Suit Line. I love See you it. next time. Bye-bye.